Wow, I was a poet and didn't even realize it. Okay, number three. I'm enjoying this immensely. I don't know if you've got this or not, but I really am enjoying this. Now, I ask you, I implore you, if you have not, if you've missed one, please see them on YouTube uh, in order because they are linear. We're going through a very exhaustive study in uh, all the theories that are out there, and then we're going to bring it all the way down to yes and amen. So this is number three of four, I think. Um, But we've called this the heart of the matter because it really comes down to that. Now, I was going to sing... You know how many songs are called Heart of the Matter? I looked online, and there's got to be six or eight of them that I could find. And uh, so I was going to sing the Heart of the Matter, but then I thought there's way too many to sing, so we're just going to, you know what, inside your own heart, you just sing that in your own heart, the Heart of the Matter, of the song that you know. So we are looking at um, last time, I said that uh, all the, of all the five theories, they can be reduced down to two. And that was very simply that those that espouse a God or God's factor is the architect of life and death. And then those that would have self, me, me, myself, I, as the center of my universe, and we come up with our own theories. Um, don't we ever come up with our own theories. But you know what? We've talked about um, that coming up with our own theories of having self-rule. But now we're going to talk about uh, specifically those that espouse some type of God. And I, I'm very specific with those words because there's a lot of different religions. There's lots of different theories. Uh, there's lots of different gods. So, um, But as the architect of life, and even that, I, I, I want you to get this. I want you to track with me because I know that I'm parsing and parsing and splitting and parsing, but I want you to get this. So of this, even this can be put into two pieces. Um, so you've got, yeah, two distinct views. Number one is that our works must appease a God in order for a better life. Even saying it is like, ugh, ugh. Or number two, I need an applause thing, you know, and number two is, I need a better applause thing. Anyway, how does this one sound? That God did all the work, not only to win our wonderful eternal life, but also to restore people's hearts and actions while they remain here on earth. Now, come on. A or B, what do we choose? I'll take, two, I'll take B for 300, Alex, or whoever is doing that now. Strange that a lot of people pick A. Now, this is what we're going to talk about. Number two is what we're going to talk about next week or in the following weeks. I'm very excited, but you know what? We have to navigate through, again, all of the theories. And uh, so hang with me as we navigate today with the other theories. Um, Today we're looking at the theories that require works as the ultimate condition for salvation and an afterlife reward. Now, you got to understand this. The enemy hates when we say this. The enemy hates this talk. But when you bring it to clarity and understanding, it makes so much sense. You're going, well, that one or that one? It seems so easy. Now, as we navigate with the one we're looking at today, the first thing we have to look at is the theory of reincarnation. Then we're going to look at works-based religions. So put your seatbelts on, a little bit of teaching, but then we're going to finish with some really, 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 really good news. Again, somebody say amen. Now, despite them being maybe applauded and celebrated by a human perspective, uh, reincarnation cannot be found, obviously, in the Bible. There's no scripture to, uh, to, to communicate that. No verse or passage from the Bible can be used to affirm that view. But we're going to look at it nonetheless because there's a lot of people on this earth that ascribe to this theory. 
Now, as this says, this is the main belief system for the afterlife for what is commonly known as Eastern religions. And uh, if I would have said this 50 or 80 years ago, a lot of people would have been completely lost. But the reality is, is the Eastern philosophies are starting to come into North America, are starting to come into Canada, are starting to, uh, not even starting, they've been here for so long. Uh, here's a list of but a few. I'm talking about Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism, Sikhism, Taoism, Shinto, Shinto, Shintoism, I want to be careful with that one, uh, Confucianism, and about a hundred other isms. That is the Eastern type religions. Now, all of these have teaching and practices on how to think and live better. But what, what are we talking about today? In reference to the afterlife, they believe we are judged on our good works. Again, there's that works again. So after we die, our eternal spirit will leave our current body, this is reincarnation, and will inhabit something else. Now, you notice that I didn't say someone else. I said something else because... Uh, again, depending on how good you've been, that could be another person or an entity or a cat or a goldfish or a tree or a stone, any inanimate object that you could eventually, uh, depending on if you've been good or bad, you could end up in one of these things. I, and this is uh, another thing to keep in mind. Outside of some kind of mystical revelation that we are given some, if it be from uh, hypnosis or from some other, some sort of uh, trance that we'd be put into or whatever. Other than that, there's no memory of our previous life. So basically, we would be caught in a fearfully uncertain eternal cycle of better or worse existence, a better or worse existence based on our effort. Gee, that sounds like marriage, doesn't it? Ah, uh, oh, come on. I just had to say that. Not at all. Marriage is a delight. Now, <laughs> rewind, rewind. So I want you to sing with me, church. Let's sing together. They see you when you're sleeping and know when you're awake. They know if you've been bad or good, so be good for goodness sake. You better not, you better watch out. You better not cry, you better not pout. I'm telling you why that supreme being's going to get you when you die. One more time, they see you. <laughs> you got to do something with these. Yeah, you got to do something because it's, uh, it's, it's tough. It's, it's hard. It's tough going. Um, Eastern religions do believe in a supreme being or gods. In fact, they believe in thousands of them. In fact, often a lot of Eastern religions believe in millions of Gods, small g, gods. All these impersonal deities in charge of countless things. And one of them is judging your works. Now, reincarnation is interesting, listen to me, because we would relegate control of our eternal soul to someone else, but we're not quite sure who. It's like going to work every day, never knowing what you're doing, what you're supposed to do, and who you're doing it for. I don't like mystery. I don't like that much mystery. I'm so glad. Can I share my testimony for 10 seconds right now? I'm so glad that I'm living for a living God. I'm so glad that I've got a God who loves me more than words can say. Oh, come on, church. Wow, yeah, come on. Was that an attempt at a whistle or was that a... Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's, that's, that was, hey, man, yeah, that's right. Somebody, can someone whistle in here? Give it a whistle. 
Yes! Yes! Woo! Go God! Okay, that's enough. Settle down. Okay, now, here's the next one. I might get myself in trouble, especially being on YouTube. I might get myself in a little trouble, we, but it's true nonetheless, and they would not disagree. So you've got Judaism, Muslim, and all of the Christian variants. That is the now the religions that believe that it's mandatory that your works will get you some better afterlife. Let's go through them really quickly. It's really easy, actually. Number one is the Muslim religion. Pretty straightforward. It's another world religion. In fact, next to Christianity, and of course, they have their opinion. We have our opinion. Uh, but we believe that in the sense of numerically, it's um, uh, the, the second most uh, attended religion of the world. But their claim is Allah as the only true God. Interesting to note, though, that they would claim Jesus as a prophet, but in rank way below Muhammad. In fact, Muhammad is the dude, the prophet. He is the answer, and he's the only one, really, that has the message getting you to Allah. Now, you don't worship Muhammad. He's a prophet. You worship Allah in their religion. But interesting that sort of Jesus is kind of put there down about number 78, now, this one is very, very interesting, and that is Judaism. It's an interesting religion. I have an asterisk there because a current Orthodox Jew would consider Jesus simply as a prophet, no different than Elijah or um, um, any of the prophets of the Old Testament. I find it very interesting. That, that's strange because... Jesus' own words, he says he's not just a prophet, but I, that's, another, that's for another day. And as followers of Christ, this is cool, we believe Christianity is the fulfillment of Judaism, or you could say Judaism completed. And that is huge for us to understand. We love Judaism, obviously, because Jesus was slash is a Jew. There would be no Christianity if it wasn't for the great religion of Judaism. But in the fullness of time, Jesus Christ came as a Jew to save all Jews and to save all Gentiles. That was his hope. That was what he wanted. Jesus wasn't simply a prophet. Somebody say amen. And I know I'm piercing through a lot of misbelief. He was not and is not simply a prophet. But eternally God with the Father. Eternally God with the Father. And came as the atoning sacrifice for both Jew and Gentile alike. We'll talk about that next time. Now... I've never preached this stuff here before, but here we go. Put your seatbelt on. The other theories that would deem uh, that are theories about what happens after death. The variants, let me explain. A classic, classic Christianity would say a variant more commonly known as a cult or any group or specific movement that would not have sound biblical teaching and set themselves up as having the exclusive handle on truth. That they have a greater revelation than any other group or sect. All right, that's important to know. Now, the reason I said that classic Christianity would say that a variant or a cult is because there's two opinions or two definitions of cult. The world's definition of cult is anything weird. That's basically the only definition that the world has. I looked it up and of course I saw these things and you know 
astral this and fly around and, and you saw yourself in half. Like it's, it's just that it's weird. A Christian, the Christian definition of cult is something that is non-biblical. Let me move on. This is very interesting. If, I don't want you to just get this today, but this is huge. This is very, very vital teaching for all of us, for all of us. All the religious theories, other than Christianity, and the variants, also known as cults, this is very important, and I've done a lot of study on world religions. Number one, all of them deny the deity of Jesus Christ. All cults, number one, deny the deity of Jesus Christ. So if you watch something, if you see something, if something's online, and you hear that Jesus was the Son of God but not God, careful, because we believe that he is the Almighty God, the Son. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. All God, three in one. Number two, they would deny eternal punishment. This one blows my mind. Cults, variants, deny eternal punishment. That is strange. We're going to be talking about that next time. And finally, and this is again so important, that salvation, they add that salvation and the reward of afterlife comes from obedience to a person or a certain series of rules that no other movement has. You might want to take a picture of this because this is very, very important teaching. Missiologists believe that there is some 3,000 cults in the world today all claiming that they are the only true one religion. Jehovah Witnesses, Mormons, the Church of Scientology, Unification Church, better known as Moonies, and the like are simply some of the more well-known ones. Now, pause. Someone might say, now, now, hold on. Now, that's just, now, you got, always you got to re rebuttal in, in, with a southern accent. You ever notice that? Uh, isn't that just every church that believes they're the right one? <laughs> I'm glad you asked. Short answer is no. And I need you to track with me and listen to this very clearly. Yes, it is true, each Christian denomination might have their slant on a few specific issues. But when it comes to pure, the pure essence of our beliefs, we are united. Somebody say united. It doesn't matter Christian reform, it doesn't matter Catholic, it doesn't matter Pentecostal, it doesn't matter charismatic, it doesn't matter Anglican, it doesn't matter uh, Presbyterian, it doesn't matter Alliance. We stand united. I needed a bigger shout than that. We stand united in the fundamentals in the things that are mandatory. And I'll tell you what's mandatory is not that. Is not that. We believe that Jesus Christ is the almighty God. We believe in eternal punishment and that there is a remedy and answer for eternal punishment. And we believe that it is not by works that anyone should boast. Oh, come on, amen is right. The church is owned and operated by the author of life, and his name is Jesus Christ. And the church has been persecuted and marginalized and criticized for 2,000 years. But it remains strong and glorious. Come on, church. Come on, church. Yeah, come on, give them a hand. Give them, a, give them some... 
Give him some praise. Jesus said, Jesus said, I will build my church and the forces of hell, the gates of hell will not, will not prevail against it. We stand strong, church, with the truth that Jesus gave us as he revealed to us the living New Testament. We believe that Holy Spirit helped the church fathers systematize our tenets of faith some 1,700 years ago. And what I'm referring to is the famous apostolic and Nicene creeds. They are absolutely non-negotiable and strictly adhered to even to this day some 1,700 years ago. So, does every church believe they're the only one? No. We believe Jesus Christ is the only one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. A truth that must be understood as we bring summary to this. All the cults and monotheistic religions, and when I say monotheistic religions, that's, that means um, religions that believe in only one God. So that would be Jew, Muslim, Christianity. So all the cults and the monotheistic religions other than Christianity require works to earn a better afterlife. This stands as clear and stark contrast to, to Christianity. You have to understand that. Now, this is something that uh, is a truth that I learned years ago, and it's something for all of us to ponder, but not just to ponder, but also to give away because it's a very, very important truth. The greatest challenge with all these other beliefs is this. When would we ever know we've done enough? When would we ever know? What's the last thing that we do? Can you imagine living in terror all your life thinking that uh, I haven't done enough? I don't know if I've earned heaven. I haven't done enough. Can you imagine? Oh, how sad. How sad. It's a, it's a little statement that I learned years ago, and it's so, so good, and that is this. All the other religions are all about doing. Following Jesus Christ is all about it's done. It's done. This is our message. Church, listen to me. This is our message we don't go sideways on theories and opinions. We stay to this. There is no greater message. Oh, boy. The last words out of Jesus Christ's mouth before he died on the cross. Did you know what they were? Right there. Last two sentences that he said on earth before he died. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Secondly, it's finished. It's done. I did it. Father, Dad, I did it. Dad, I did it. I made a way for humanity. I made a way, Father. You're what you wanted, I accomplished. What was your will, I did. It is finished. And the Bible says he breathed his last. You say, well, why do I use this scripture? Because it really is about the heart of the matter. This is something that uh, was penned thousands of years ago. Jo Joshua is speaking to the Israelite, the Jewish people. Interesting. And he's laying out a truth and this is just before he died himself, and this is his last speech. And he said, okay, people, choose today who you will serve. Would you prefer to serve the gods of your ancestors that they served beyond the Euphrates? Or maybe the gods of the Amorites in those lands you now live? Or maybe the 
ideologies and the theories out there in the world in 2022. But Joshua said, I'll tell you one thing. As for me and my family, we're going to serve the Lord. Come on. <laughs> no one is going to change that. I said no one is going to change that. We will serve the Lord God Almighty. His name is Jesus. If I can have um, the worship team back, please. And if I can have the team ready for communion today. The heart of the matter is it's a choice for all of us. Now, I know that I'm mostly talking to Christians here. But you know, we wander. So it's a message of uh, getting us back online. It's a message online to those that are maybe curious about all of the stuff and all the religions and all of the theories. And they're really, really wondering. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to consider all the stuff out there. Why does everyone say they're the right one? Why does everyone say they're the right one? Well, this has been an apologetic series. And... I want you to look at that one truth. When you, when you see the word all, all, when you can go all, all religions and sects and theories other than the Jesus way, all of them require works. Jesus made a way. He did the work. He did the work, won a wonderful salvation for us. All we have to do is come. We choose today. We choose. So I pose the question today for everyone here, for everyone watching online, both now and maybe years to come. You're at the Valley of Decision. And it's time to decide. The world's getting darker. The world's getting darker. It's time to get in the boat. Jesus, speak today, Master. Reveal yourself today, Lord. By truth and by the speech of truth. Holy Spirit, have your way today in Jesus' name. Is there anyone here, is there anyone watching online that would say, I now get it. I have, I have watched this. There's been enough reasonable evidence that Jesus Christ is the living way. And I would like Jesus Christ. If there's anyone here today, if there's anyone watching online and then text that number and say I'm in I choose Jesus so father have your way today speak today Lord for someone that would say finally I decide I'm in Lord would you minister to them today Lord would you speak would you draw today by your presence, by your Holy Spirit's presence, would you draw today that people could find and choose life and the burdens of this world would lift off and the hope and joy of Jesus would come in and that you would take away, Lord, all of the rebellion, all the sin, all the baggage, all the stuff that robs us of life. Would you remove those things, Master, we pray in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen and amen. God bless you today.